I was working for DEFRA on international development policy. Um, it involved a lot of traveling um, and working through, through the UN, which at the time I really, 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 in, uh, really enjoyed. Um, the highlight was the Civil Service Sports Day um, and we lost in the first round of the round of tournament. So again, I mean, I wasn't really uh, uh, excelling on the sporting stage <laughs> at that point either. Um, so I, I, uh, having found running and found that I really enjoyed it, I joined uh, a group down at Battersea, coached by Frank Horwell, who many of you may may know. He's a fantastic running coach, and I learned a lot from him. So throughout 2002 and three, I, I trained, I trained under under Frank. Um, unfortunately, just before the marathon in 2003, I um, got hit by a car and uh, got myositis um, in, in my in my quad, so I started swimming again with a pool boy between my legs, and that's all I did for, for 2003. Um, and in 2004, I discovered triathlon. Um, I remember talking to a girl called Eleanor Rest, um, who had then qualified for the World Age Group Championships, in, I think it was in Cancun that year, and I'd never even heard of, of the World Age Group Championships, and was absolutely amazed that she'd qualified and was going to represent Great Britain. So I was quite inspired by that, and that's when I really first thought of, of doing triathlon. Um, I borrowed a wetsuit from, from Dan Bullock, and Ellie sold me her third-hand Peugeot um, bike, and I set about trying to learn how to, how to ride it. So that was in 2004, um, and I entered, a, entered some races. I did the Eaton Super Sprint. Um, where I came second in the first one and then first in, in the second one. Milton Keynes, um, where I came fourth, and Bedford, uh, Olympic distance, where I came third. And I was quite happy because that year I won a Timex watch. I won two Timex watches in the Eaton Super Sprint, but they wouldn't give me the second one because I've already won one. <laughs> and then uh, at Bedford I won this tasteful silver kind of golf ball thing, but I don't have a dog, so it's not particularly useful. <laughs> Either. Um, at that time, I got pretty uh, disillusioned with, with my job in the civil service. I think uh, the high-level kind of policy making was, was quite frustrating for me because I really just wanted to work at the grassroots level and feel like I was making a difference. So I think, I mean, as many of you know, many of you know, I um, I, I took a sabbatical from my job and, and went to work in Nepal. I was working on water and sanitation and, and health projects out there. And, and I mean, this is a, a picture one of, of the, the drinking water that, and well, the water that the, the whole community just uh, used for absolutely everything. And then the, the tap that, that we constructed as, as part of the as part of the project. Um, and when I when I got to Nepal, I bought a mountain bike which I called. Which I call Prem, which in, in Nepali means boyfriend. Um, so I spent all my spare time in Prem, um, you know, mountain biking a couple of hours before work every morning. Um, there were a couple of races out there. The mountain biking is actually quite popular, especially amongst Nepali boys. No, none of the girls do it, so they thought it was a bit strange when we all got dressed up in our lycra. But um, yeah, there were a lot of boys that um, I could bike with. And I did a, uh, a cycle trip. Um, from Lhasa in Tibet uh, to Kathmandu, it's about 1,400k across the Himalayas. Um, we went to Everest Base Camp, this is our cycling, um, and Everest is in the background there. Um, myself and my friend Tina um, at Everest Base Camp, and uh, me. And obviously that's me. Um, but I think that's really where I developed my love for biking. Um, and my ascending skills were a whole lot better than my my descending skills. But yeah, I mean, I just, I really, really developed a lot of biking strength there and also the mental strength that I think I, that I gained when I was doing the trip across the Himalayas, I think has stood me in, in good stead now as a professional because nothing really does compare to doing 10 hours in the saddle. Uh, minus, uh, minus 10 with the wind and snowstorms and everything coming at you. I mean, the ride didn't seem as difficult as, as, it, <laughs> as, as that did. Um, I was also doing some running in Nepal, but I got bitten um, quite badly by a rabid dog, so I, 
had to pay to my man again, but so I just carried on biking. Um, after Nepal, I, I um, went travelling, went to New Zealand, got roped into doing the coast to coast. Um, someone thought it was a great idea, the 243 um, uh, race, uh, kilometre race across across New Zealand, um, included a 67k kayak and bike and kayak. Um, <laughs> So it was really good fun. I loved it. Absolutely fantastic. Um, then I um, cycled toured around Tasmania, and I cycled toured in parts of Argentina as well. Um, that's me with press. Um, cycle toy. Um, and I came home in May uh, 2006. Um, um, I went back to work in the civil service, and um, being as tight as the ducks are, I borrowed another another bike, I didn't buy one, so I got a, got my uh, my old Klein um, that I, I've had till very recently um, and borrowed a, another, another wetsuit, but I did put my hands in my pockets and, and went Sigma and, and bought some, some shoes and pedals which I'm still using. Um, <laughs> my first race when I came back in 2006 was the Reddit Super Sprint, um, little said about that the better. Um, I drowned in the swim because the wetsuit I borrowed was too big and I sank and I couldn't lift my arms and I had to be rescued by a kayaker. So <laughs> I didn't actually finish the Reddit Super Sprint. Um, next race was the Shropshire Triathlon, um, which went rather better. And being the qualification for the world, that was great. Um, but I remember the night before the, the Shropshire Triathlon, I was taught how to mount and dismount my bike. Um, using my new clipping pedal, so I mean that might have given me the extra edge at birch who knows. Um, and yeah, so I qualified for the world and I got myself a coach. Um, I was coached by a guy called Tim Weeks, who I think many of you know who's British, you know, who was work, working for British Triathlon at the time. Um, he sent me this 10 week training plan. Um, and given that I was still quite injury prone with regards to running, it was very much swim and, swim and bike focused, and I was doing a hell of a lot of, of swimming, um, up to about, I don't know, about you know, 8K a day, um, and then, well, not every day, but some days. And yeah, but with a limited amount of running. So before the Worlds, I actually only did kind of three 20 minute runs uh, per week. Um, um, but thankfully wasn't wasn't injured going into the world. Um, so the world champs were in um, Lausanne in 2006 and I was just so so happy to be there and to be wearing a GB a GB vest. I mean that was more than I could have ever imagined and I I didn't go into it with with any expectations whatsoever. Um, and the race you know went went incredibly well. Well actually I had a poor swim but the, the bike and the run went went really well. Um, my friend Georgia remember me collapsing as I crossed the line saying, Did I win, did I win? And she said, Yes. And I, I, I mean I just could not I didn't I couldn't believe that I'd I'd done it and never in a million years would I would I have expected to, to go there and to and to win. But I guess at that point I had um, a big decision to make whether or not to take the risk. Um, leave my job and, and go professional, or just you know just stay uh, competing as an age grouper. Um, so I mean it was very difficult for me knowing, knowing very little about triathlon, knowing very little about my potential. Um, I wanted someone basically to make the decision for me. Um, so Tim Weeks put me in touch with uh, Brett Sutton, who lives uh, for most of the year in Switzerland. I went over to, to see him a year ago. Um, and did a kind of a test week with him so he could take a look at me physically but also mentally and see whether he thought I had what it takes to to go professional and luckily for me um, he said yes and I um, I joined the team uh, out in Thailand for our first uh, for our first training camp um, so many of you will know that I'm I'm a member of, of a team called Team TBB. It stands for the bike uh, the bike boutique. Um, it's a professional uh, triathlon team. It's supported financially through a bike franchise called the Bike Boutique, which is based in Asia, and and some other sponsors 
It comprises about 18 pro athletes, many of whom you, you, you know, Bella, Bella Comerford and, and Stephen, Ronaldo Colucci and Belinda Granger, um, a lot of longer, longer distance athletes. Um, the, the, the team basically has three main names, um, success at a global level for the pro triathletes, um, promoting triathlon throughout Asia and undertaking social development projects um, which are taking place currently in Brazil and the Philippines and obviously it was that that also attracted me to, to the team. Um, so day to day life um, as a pro, we have uh, the team has two training camps, one in Asia and and one in Switzerland. Last year it was in, in Thailand, this year it probably won't be in Thailand. Um, most of the athletes come to camp, but the duration of their stay there uh, varies depending on you know their individual circumstances. So we're not expected to all be at camp for any length of time, and, and people go and, and come back depending on, on their races. Um, in Thailand, the facilities were actually really, really good. Um, we had a, an awesome 50 meter, open air 50 meter pool, um, uh, which we had all to ourselves. It was 25 that way and, and 50 meter that way. The roads were, were great, um, really, really great, and pretty, pretty quiet uh, with cycle lanes on all of them, um, and a great track, uh, as Harry Wiltshire um, might know Sam Renouf, and that's that's Brett there in the in the, in the black. But yeah, no, that was an, an awesome an awesome track and an awesome place 